and lips. Incline unto our aid, O God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we be seated, brothers and sisters. This morning, I have taken my home to be the expression of the marvelous grace of God. The expression of the marvelous grace of God. On Thursday, 11 deacons were raised to the order of the Presbyterate. 10 for the Catholic Archdiocese of Lagos and 1 for the Claritian Missionary. The act of raising them is the work of God. Raising them to the priesthood. And the singular purpose is to work in the vineyard of the Lord. The vineyard of the Lord for them is the church. And that tells you and I that God's call to man, to himself, is the work of grace. And the Bible calls it marvelous grace. The grace of God provides the work for man. The few to tend in. Two important facts. Number one, it is God who provides the work for man. Who gives man the field to tend in. In the parable of the worker in the vineyard, the great landowner is God. The vineyard or field can either be the world or the church. The world, the church, and man exist simply because of the grace of God. It is that grace of God that includes man to become a co-creator, to go out to become the hand of God to man in the various fields that we have been called into. It is God's grace that has created man and it is God's grace that has provided the field that is both the church or the world for man to work in. Without God, there will be nothing for you and I to work in. Whatever we have today is an expression of God's grace. And so we must always acknowledge that fact. Whatever field you are in today is part of your contribution to fulfill God's desire. And also, it is also it has been given to you as a singular act of God's grace. The second one, it is always God who goes out to seek and call man to work. Now, it is not the workers who come to him and say they want to work. It is God that reaches out to you and brings you into his service. He goes after man and so he expresses it in various ways and this is simply an expression of God's marvelous grace every step involved in the call is an expression of the grace of God it can be a call the challenge to go and labor the promise of wages and reward the acceptance of the response and the sending forth into the field are all due to God's grace God calls you then he promises you then you are set to go on that errand and then you move actually into the field and then you begin to walk. It is the grace of God that is so sufficient that has made this possible. In reality, the soul of man must serve something. Is it that you serve God or you serve the devil? Is it that you serve God and his righteousness or you serve the world and its sin and everything that, has, that is contained in the world? It is a decision for man to either cooperate or not to cooperate with God. And then we find that expression of cooperating with God in our blessed mother. It is either we say yes to God or we say no to God. God's call is always directed to a man, a person, to come and serve him. And then there are signs that expresses this call of God. Sometimes God looks out several things in calling a man. There must be the willingness, there must be the eagerness in a man to really serve God. And who puts that willingness and eagerness in man is God. The call of God is not to serve your own need, but rather the will of God. Every time man intends to serve his own will, it brings so much trouble, so much chaos. It brings about greed, it brings about confusion, it brings about enslavement, it brings about burden, it brings about problem here and there because we want to serve our need 
But every time we say, I desire to serve the will of God and his purposes for his sake, for his kingdom, then we can come to peace and joy. Brothers and sisters, the first call of God begins with what? It begins at the heart of man. God places that desire, that burning desire in you to serve him. There is always a talk. There is always a pull. There is always the voice. There is always the thought. There is always the movement to do the will of God. Brothers and sisters, we must note that when God calls you, he has promised you full wage. He said, when I sent you, did you lack anything? When the Lord sends you, so long as you cooperate with the Lord, you will never lack. You will never be in want. Every provision is made. But the only thing is what? Are you ready to follow the Lord? Are you ready to lay down your life? Are you ready and eager to do the will of God? This is what the Lord is asking you and I to do. If you are willing and eager to do his will and do his work, then you are blessed. If you, if you believe, for example, that a company will pay you your wage, then you are induced to do, actually go out and work. So God, first and foremost, places that design you. And then when you believe, you believe that he's actually going, he's one sending you, then you receive the blessings following it. God's call is by grace, not by work. The call of God is by grace, not by work. Man can never win his own salvation. It is the grace of God. No matter what you think you know, no matter what you think you do, it is by the grace of God that grants you what? That salvation. The fact that Christ speaks of work and wages does not mean in any way or sense that man can gain on any salvation. It is by the grace of God. That all power belongs to God. It is God who is all-knowing. The Lord who is all-wise. The word of God says to you and I in Romans chapter 4 verse 3 to 5. It says, for what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as what? Righteousness. Verse 4 says, now to one who works his wages are not reckoned as a gift but as his due." And verse 5 says, And to one who does not work, but trusts him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is what? Reckoned as what? Righteousness. It is God who determines. But man must have faith in God. But we go back again. Who puts that faith in man? It is still God. Everything begins and ends in God. And that is why the scripture says, He's the beginning and yet is the what? The end. Number two, the service of God is for a day, which symbolizes a lifetime. When the day comes to an end, the willing worker will receive his promise. The promise that the landowner, which is God, has given to him. The world, the man who actually follows the will of God, will be rewarded exactly as the Lord had promised. The time for the work is a lifetime. That this lifetime can be brief. It can be long for some. The Bible says 70 or 80 is our lifespan. But it's only by the grace of God that you and I endure it forever. Brothers and sisters, it is this understanding that sponsors the strength. When you know that you have the backing of God in the assignment that God has given to you. It gives you the strength to withstand whatever crisis that comes your way. Because you have encountered a God who has sent you on an errand. Brothers and sisters, to do the work of God, you must know the God of the work. Otherwise, whenever you do the work of God, without the God of the work, there is always a vacuum. Because you must know, per season, per time, what is God actually doing? What is the will of God in this assignment? There is a reason why God has elevated you. There is a reason why God has given you wealth. There is a reason why God has given you all the things that you desire. And then there is a purpose for it. And when you understand it by going connecting with him then you can come to birth the purposes of God you must always we must always seek the face of God in the assignment that God has given to us we have a short time to serve God we have a short time to serve God and if you utilize it well brothers and sisters well enough we will gain the reward here on earth and also in the world to come now we must always know that as we go on doing the work of God, the presence of God goes with us. So we are never alone. He told his disciples in the Great Commission, go into the world, baptize every nation, teach them what I have told you, and know that I am with you to, what? to the end of what? The age. 
So God is with you. So you are not alone. There is the power that goes with you. There is the name that goes with you. There is the presence that goes with you. There is the authority of the believer. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 1, he called his disciples to himself and he breathed upon them and said he gave them power and authority. So, when you are going to do the work of God, you have the power, you have the authority, you have the name, you have the presence of God. So, you have the backing of God. So, God does not send you in error. He sends you with the purpose. And as he sends you, his presence accompanies you. And that is why a man always, must always seek the face of God. Must always seek the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord makes a difference in a man's life. Moses understood this. And that is why he said, I will not leave this place unless your presence goes with us. That is what you find in Exodus chapter 33. I will, we will never go from this place unless your presence go with us. Why? Your presence will do what make the difference. It is the presence of the Lord that makes everything possible. It is the presence of the Lord that gives you power. It is the presence of the Lord that gives you authority. It is the presence of God that gives you that conviction. It is the presence of God that gives you that peace of mind. Even in the midst of the storm, even in the midst of tribulation, you are calm because you know you have the backing of the Lord. And so one who relies on the strength of the Lord, as the word of God says in Psalm 121, I look up to the mountain from where cometh my help. My help cometh from who? The Lord who made what? Heaven and earth. So in the time of need, in the time of peril, in the time of tribulation, as you do the work of God, whether as a priest, whether as a sister, whether as a doctor, whatever profession you are in, you have the backing of God. So you have come to church to worship this God who has given that assignment and when you connect with him, he goes with you. So this week you are going in is a week of God's power. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. As you go, you will win every battle in the name of Jesus. So you must have that conviction that God is with me. The presence of God goes with you. That as you keep worshipping, as you keep fellowshipping with him, then you continue to grow in the knowledge of God and in the strength of his mind. Then you know that God is what? Powerful. The word of God says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 17, Let no man trouble me. Why shouldn't they trouble you? Because I bear the marks of Christ. I have the marks of Christ. I have the assignment of God upon my life. And you can see in the second reading, St. Paul is actually saying that Christ will be honored in my body, in everything that I do. So I know that I have the backing of God. And this sponsors your conviction. This vetoes your authority. This vetoes your confidence in the Lord. Because the presence of God is the backing of anyone who actually works for the Lord. So you walk in an environment that is terrible. Oh, do not be afraid. You are doing the work of the Lord. And as you are doing the work of the Lord, there is a promise of service, longevity. There is protection as you serve the Lord with understanding. The understanding captured there is knowing the God of the work. Moses could not face Pharaoh without knowing the God who sent him. And when he asked, who shall I say sent me? He said, I am who I am. So I am who I am, sent him. And that is why the rod of Moses fell to the ground and then he turned into a big serpent that swallowed all what? The, what the, 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 the serpent of what? Egypt. And then he picked it. The moment he picked it, he became the rod and the staff of God. With it, he was able to perform signs and wonders. And the Lord told Moses, why are you looking at me? What is in your hand? Stretch it forth. And then there was the word, the parting of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel were able to walk on dry ground. And then the children of Israel, the children of Egypt thought that it is what? Magu, magu. They can do it by their power. The Bible says it is not by your strength. It is not by their, your power, but by the grace of the living God. They attempted to walk and what the waters of the sea swallowed them up and that is why the one who is chasing you will chase you into your promised land and the waters of the Nile will swallow them up if you believe say big amen this is the work of the Lord so whoever says let him bring this particular man down so long as I am yielded so long as you are yielded to God touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm so as you are going out this week the power of God goes with you. Let me hear that loud amen that the devil will be put to shame. He has not heard it. That amen as you are going out, you have the backing of the Lord. So be not afraid. 
He says in Isaiah 43 verse 10, Be not afraid, I am with you. You may not like the situation, the environment. You may not like the conditions when you are walking in. But there is a grace. There is a power. There is a God who makes all things possible. Though the Bible says your beginning may be small, your later ending should be what? Great. The Lord has spoken once. Twice have I what? Heard. And I have come to the conclusion that all power belongs to what? God. So if you go to an environment, if this, this I'm saying to you, if I'm not convinced, if I've not witnessed it, I can't talk about it. I cannot talk about it convincingly because I have witnessed it. I have seen it. And because I trusted in God, I came out shining. As I come out shining, as I've come out shining, you will come out from whatever hole. You will come out from whatever challenge. You will shine as a star. And ladies, star of the sea, I told you that your name from today is the light of the world. So when I say, our ladies, star of the sea, you will say, the light of the world. Our ladies, star of the sea. I am not hearing that confusion. You're not convinced yet. You're not convinced. You're not convinced. Say, neighbor, do you know that you are the light of the world? So shine forever. In the name of Jesus. So I say, our lady star of the sea. I am not feeling that energy. Our lady star of the sea. I am not feeling it yet. If you know that you know that you are the light, be on your feet and respond. Our lady star of the sea. May you shine wherever you go. Shine in the morning. Shine in the afternoon. Shine in the evening. Shine at night. That even as you are shining when they are planning to cover you. No power on earth will ever cover your light. If you believe, say a big amen. Sin and their brothers and sisters. You have the backing of the Lord. You have the backing of the Lord. So no matter the perils. No matter the danger. No matter the attacks. No matter the criticisms. No matter the tension, no matter the anxiety, St. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, he says, Offer all that troubles you, have no anxiety, but in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Verse 7 says, And the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, will come upon you. When somebody sees you in the midst of the storm, you are calm. What is happening? The backing of the Lord, the presence of the Lord, the grace of the Lord is with you. Nothing shakes you. And they try all their errors even though they go and consult mediums you are what strong enough you are standing brothers and sisters many times before you can express this power you must belong to God so there is a power to belong there is a power to do what do the work of God and there is a power to cast out what gives you that power the presence of God so when you are doing the work of God know that you are doing it in the name of God you are not doing it to please any man you are doing it to please God and then he talks about the reward system in the kingdom of God. The, king, the reward system in the kingdom of God is immeasurable. But scripture has been able to narrow it down and call it evening. The evening. The evening is divided into twofold. Evening number one talks about the, the death of a man. When a man dies, he will do what receives the reward. The reward for serving God. And number two, the evening also typifies judgment. So while the Lord is calling to work in the house of the Lord, you must be diligent and focus on it. I told you last Sunday that working in the house of God is not a thing that you should ignore. It is a thing that you should cherish and hold forth. The church is not a nuisance to civilization or what? To an environment. The church is the house of God. The church is God's agenda. It is in the church that he calls the people of the earth to come. And what is the sole purpose of calling them together? That they may worship and praise God. It is in praising God that your battle is won. It is in praising God that victory comes to you. While you are praising God, God is fighting your battle. While you are serving God, sweeping the house of God, singing as a chorister. Look at our city here. Look at the city here. Very empty. 
And that does not mean that we do not have choristers seated here in this assembly. What are you doing there? Is that your ministry? Your ministry is here. Do your ministry. Let nothing separate you from that particular ministry. As you are walking in the house of God, singing, and maybe the enemy has said, let us sack him from his work or sack him from our work. That as you are praising God, God says, come on, get out from the way. This is my child. Nothing will happen to him. God changes the bad news to good news. Why? It is not only just shouting in the house of God, praise the Lord, hallelujah. There are secrets. There are mysteries. Stop giving an excuse why you won't serve God. Why you won't do this. Why you won't do the work of God. Do the work of God with all diligence. Do the work of God with all your heart. Do the work of God with all your mind. With all your soul. That as you are doing it, there is an engracing that comes upon you. Nothing can harm you. You will never be disappointed. The Bible says, I was, I'm young. I was young. But now I am old. I have never seen the Lord word changing. The Lord is constant. The Lord is faithful. There is never a time when a man says he retires from the work of God. You must keep working in the house of God every day. The only time you retire is when you close your eyes to time and open it to eternity. And when you go there, you will still serve God. Oh, how do you serve God? You will worship him. The Bible not say that the 24 elders, the 20 and 4 elders, what is the assignment? They will put down their golden crown and then they will kneel and begin to worship him. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts. So the assignment of the angels is to worship God. And the, the assignment of man is to pray and worship God. This is what you can give to God that devil can, the Satan cannot actually give God. And tell me a man, show me a man who is, whom the devil is afraid of. And I will show you a man who worships God night and day. In worshiping God night and day, will the Lord stand by you. The Lord is a shield that the righteous run to and they are what? Saved. So if you are seated here, I am talking to you as your parish priest. If you are seated here and God has given you an assignment, stop running. Stop running. Do the work of God. Remember before all those things arrived in your life, God was there. If you truly want to stand strong, stay with God. Still say to him, I'm the one you have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. Hey, I am the one you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I am the one that you have shown mercy. I kneel every day before you. I am still a young man that you picked from the gutters. I am still the one whom you washed clean of all his iniquities. I am still the one whom you have actually been helping. Lord, I am here not by my strength, but by your grace. I am still alive today, but by the grace of God. You wake up every morning, the grace of God. Let you not be that you wake up one morning, it's my business, my business. It is not your business. God can take that work from you and give it to another. Let your bishopric not leave you. Your bishopric is your place of assignment. You must be diligent. You must be faithful. Now, dear brothers and sisters, you go into the Bible. Jesus concluded this particular parable by saying, the last will be the first and the first will be the last. Why did Jesus say that? The disciples, God, they were actually seeking for the assurance of their salvation. You are walking with Christ. You want God to save you. You want God to be with you. I have served in the hands of God since I was a young man. But now I am old. I want to rest. Let the young ones go. No. Whether you are young or you are old, you must keep serving the Lord. What is the secret? That they, these particular disciples, they thought that yes, they have actually gained that place of importance by being close to God. But God says no. That is not what is important. The most important thing is that your heart is yielded to God. The word is yield, yield, yield. Yield your heart. Because if you your heart is not yielded to the Lord, you will not know when jealousy will creep in, when envy will creep in, when competition will creep in, and when certain things will creep in and then spoil your heart. He says, my son, give me your heart. And that is why the first thing is saying, seek the Lord diligently while he may still be found. Let your righteous turn from his wicked ways and come back to the Lord. 
seek the Lord every day. Every morning I seek, to, I seek the Lord. Because while you think that you have won the race, the Bible says the race is not to the swiftest. It's not to the swiftest. Time and space he has given to everyone. If you make use of the time very well, then you will gain the reward. If you do not, then you will gain condemnation. So stop giving excuses to the work of God. Stop having this feeling of, um, uh, 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 having this kind of understanding that yes, we are the most important ones. No. Who is it or she that is important? Is the one whose heart is pure. Whose in mind is on the Lord. Who seeks the Lord day and night. Who loves the work of God, loves man, loves God. Who uses his talent and his gift to serve God. Who spends his resources in advancing the purpose of the kingdom of God. Who does the will of God, even in secret and in the open. This is the kind of man whom God is seeking. He's not seeking a man who has money. Alone, your heart must be with God. The Lord has divided into cadres. There are those who go to him, go on mission, but they are what we call the kingdom financiers. There are those who are called men of influence. You can serve God with your influence. Yet yeah, last week, I had a vision and I prayed in the church. I never knew that a man, a parishioner of mine, because I said it for the people, but the person was even there. And then the, 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 the man came to me and said, Father, the task force came to close my office. And they closed his office and city. He came to me and I prayed with him. But then there was a helper by the way. But there was a helper by the, but just by the corner. And I called and beckoned the person, please come. And he made me say, Father, it's done. You need men of influence who will speak on your behalf. Who will speak on behalf of the church. That in the time of need, there are men with the kingdom mindset that can actually stand for God. Men and women of influence. Men and women who are highly positioned. These, the Bible calls the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers are not only those who are demonic men and no, not only that. It's not those who are partnered with dark powers. There are men whom you cannot cast out but you have to walk through them. You need the spirit of discernment to know them. And we need them in our church. We need them in the church. If the church will withstand the trials to come, we need men of influence. Men of influence like Joseph of Arimathea, who went and consulted with Pilate and was able to bring down the body of Christ. Men of influence for the church. So, you are a wealthy man. You are a man of influence. You are a CEO. If you have the kingdom mindset, doing, having been a CEO without the mindset of God cannot take you to heaven. What can take you to heaven is the mindset of Christ. Yielding yourself day and night at the service of the Lord. Doing the will of God morning and night. Every day, every minute, the will of God. Oh, there is something lacking in the church. Before the priest even mentioned it, you have spotted it as a father. We can do this. Father, we can do this. This is the kingdom mindset that Christ is talking about. It is the man who will be the last, the least, then becoming the first. And the first who has come, gone with your pomp and show, with pride and arrogance, and says, yes, we are the ones who build the church. We are the founding members. And before you are founding members, all founding members, make sure you win the prize of eternal life. That while you are the founding member, make sure you remain committed to the things of God. Do not take the back chair. Be in front and continue to work in a lady's tower of the sea. Ensure that the purpose of the kingdom of God is advanced. That your will, your desire is for God, not for any other thing else but to serve God above all else that you praise the name of the Lord that as you praise the name of the Lord to him be glory all days of our lives then as you reveal the glory of God, the blessings of God comes to you I pray for you as you work in the house of the Lord your hands will not be empty say amen that is so convincing that your hands will never be empty in the mighty name of Jesus I call it nothing. You see why it is dangerous to insult a man who was in the house of the Lord. Like the church wardens who are there, they talk to you most of the time to correct you and you shun them. Your case is just like the case of Rachel, the wife of David, the daughter of Saul. The wife David danced in the house of the Lord. What did she do? She was mocking him. And what happened? Her womb was closed. Do not mock a man who is working in the house of God. 
Do not mock a man who is correcting in the house of God. Do not mock a man who is diligent with the work of God. You are there sitting down like Pontius Pilate and Nebuchadnezzar. You are not moved to do God's work. But you are, you are Pontius Pilate and Nebuchadnezzar. You are there judging and judging and judging and criticizing. You are pointing finger. Remember the other fingers are pointing to you. What are you doing seated there? Do the work of God. God doesn't want anyone to be idle. You can see there. He said, you too go into my house and do my work. But we need the grace to do the God's work. There must be the grace that revives us to win souls for God. Above all else, whatever we are doing is to win souls for God. To win souls for God. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you. There's more that's found in you, and we, and we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you, and we will never settle for less. We know. There's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. The work of God is for everyone. It's not only for the priests. Sit down and ask yourself, how many souls have I won for Christ? Since you have been a member of Our Lady's Tower of the Sea, ask yourself, how many souls have you won for Christ? This is the indices that God is going to use to judge. It is not in criticism. You talk and talk and talk. <laughs> Nothing. But it is in work. Show me your work. Show me what you have done for the Lord. Where are the marks of the kingdom what? advancement? Where are the marks? Where are the nails? Where is the crown? Where are the thorns? What have you done for the Lord that you can beat your chest and say like Hezekiah, remember I served you in the days of my youth. And then he will send back the prophet and say, give him life more, 15 years. 15 years. Stop running from God. Ask yourself, Oh, our ladies of the sea, all founding members, all newcomers to our ladies of the sea. How many souls have you won for God? The person that can help us, we're having a novena, is our lady, star of the sea. She's the beacon of light who directs us back to Christ. We're having a novena, be part of the novena. Be part of growing our lady star of the sea. I know you are busy. I know you have thousand and one reasons why you must not come. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't do this, I don't do that. Yes, you are right. But God wants you to do more for him. Just that little, that little more changes, makes a difference in your life. There's a rosary for us. This is a rosary. 10 minutes, we have finished it. 10 minutes, giving time for, to God can save you a whole lot. I pray through the intercession of our blessed mother, may you receive help from God. I pray through the intercession of our blessed mother, may, you, may your faith never be dashed in the mighty name of Jesus. May through the intercession of our blessed mother, our lady star of the sea, as we work for God, may things that are difficult in your life may you find solutions to them in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. through the intercession of our blessed mother that at the end of everything may you win the crown of unfading glory through Christ our Lord Amen. he enter he sit down shake Lord it's in you Lord we know 
There's more that's haunting you. Is it you? 